Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. The last couple of videos have been all about setting up a Visual Studio solution whenever we create a game project, adding source files to that solution which contain the game code, and building the solution as a standalone executable as well as a DLL that we can load in the level editor. Today, the time has finally come to set things up to actually run the game as a standalone executable. Let's add a couple of methods in Visual Studio class that we can use to run or stop the game application. The first method that we added is to run the game code solution. And here we check if Visual Studio instance is not null and it's not already debugging the game code and it's not building and the build also has succeeded. So we haven't had any errors while building the solution. And in that case, when everything is okay, we can issue a command to Visual Studio to run the solution depending on the value of this debug boolean. So if you want to run it in debugger, so we can set breakpoints and step through the game code, we can pass true and then it will start in a debugger. And if you want to run the game outside the debugger, like when we press control F5 in Visual Studio, it will just run the application. Then we just do this one, start without debugging. And in case we started the game codes in debugger, we can also issue a command to stop it. So here there is a stop command, which makes the debugger stop debugging. Now let's add a couple of methods in the project class that we can use to call these two methods. Here, similar to this method that we can call to build game code, I'm going to create two asynchronous methods to run the game and stop the game. Here is a method that we can call the same way we call build game code by doing a command binding. And when we call this method, we are going to try and build the solution if it's not already has been built. And if that build succeeded, we can try and run the game code by calling Visual Studio run method. And these two methods are called asynchronously. That means that they are run on another thread. So the UI in the level editor remains available for user interaction. Now I'm going to write a second method to stop the game application. And this one is rather simple. We just call Visual Studio stop method also asynchronously. Next, I'm going to add commands that we can bind to our user interface so that we can call these methods. Here, 
Here I added three new commands to start the game application in the debugger, to start the game application without debugging, and to stop the application if we are running it in a debugger. And then we can go ahead and assign relay commands to these new commands. And we also shouldn't forget to call on property changed for these new commands. And then we can go ahead and set key bindings for these new commands in the world editor. Here we set hotkeys for these commands, which is the same as in Visual Studio. When we press F5, we just run the game code in the Visual Studio debugger. And when we hold Ctrl and press F5, the game will be executed like a standalone game. And if we are running the game in the debugger, we can stop debugging by pressing Shift and F5. Okay, let's see what happens when we try to run the game. So now we have a game entity here that has a script component and I can press F7 to build, which succeeds. And if I press F5, it fails because it can't find this method. If you remember, we have a main function in the engine, but a main function is only used when we build a console application or a non-Windows application. But because we changed our target platform to Windows, it's going to try and find win main, which we don't have, of course. So next we have to actually go ahead and implement a win main function so that the game application can start here. Here in core main CPP, we see that we have indeed a main function, but because we are targeting Windows, this main function is useless now. So we have to create a win main function. And of course, we are only doing this when we are targeting Windows. So for other platforms, we need to implement other kinds of entry functions. But for now, because we are only targeting Windows, I'll put the implementation for WinMain in this ifdef block. In addition, we only want to define a win main function or an entry function only when we are not running in the editor. So only if this use with editor is not defined, we will have a win main function. Now, as you can see, because this use with editor is defined, everything I write here is a bit grayed out to indicate that this is not going to be part of the build. 
So if I change the build configuration to debug, so we don't have this use with editor defined, then we see that it's going to be brighter to indicate that this is now part of the code that's going to be compiled. First, of course, we also need to include the Windows header. And WinMain will have a couple of arguments that we are not going to use. So we could give these arguments to WinMain, but right now we are not going to use this. Here I'll add something that can detect uh, memory leaks, like we did here. In the engine DLL, we have this CRT flex set to detect memory leaks, so that if we allocate memory on the heap and we don't free it, then we get messages in the output window of Visual Studio that lets us know that we have memory leaks. Next, we are going to initialize the engine. And if that succeeds, then we can go ahead and have an update loop. But before doing these, we need to define three functions. One to initialize the engine, one to update the engine, and one to shut down the engine. Of course, we haven't got those functions yet, so I'm going to have a forward declaration here that will let the C++ compiler know that those functions are somewhere else in the code. And now we can have a Windows message loop, which almost all main functions in Windows applications have. Here is our win main function in its entirety. Here we try to initialize the engine and if that succeeds, we enter a loop and the loop is repeated while we are running. And there is another loop inside that gets the messages. The messages get translated by calling this function and dispatched. And that means that when we have a window in our application, then the window procedure of that window will be called and these messages will be passed on to it. So we can handle different kind of input or messages that Windows gives us, like resizing the window or whether the user pressed the left mouse button and those kind of things. And one of those messages is, of course, when we are quitting the application, this WM quit message will be issued. And if that's the case, then running will be set to false and that will cause the loop to break and we end up shutting down the engine and exiting the application. Okay, now we have to implement these three functions. Otherwise, we will have unresolved externals as linker errors. Here in core, I'll add another CPP file. And then here, I'll just implement those three functions. Of course, we don't have anything for them to do yet, so I'll leave them mostly empty, except this engine initialize that returns true. Now I'm going to build the game again.
And this time, as you can see, we are running the game in the debugger. Here you can see the memory and CPU usage. And if we go back to the level editor and I press Shift F5, then the process will terminate. So that works fine. But now the problem is, of course, that when we run the game, the game doesn't know anything about our game entities that we have here because the level editor has all the data right now. And when we run the game, the game doesn't know anything about what our game actually is. So the first thing that we have to do next is to save this information for the standalone game so it can load it and create those game entities and then we can take it from there. Basically what I would like to do is to save the game project in a binary format instead of saving it as an XML file. Therefore, we are going to have a method in the project that will save the contents of the project or rather the contents of the active scene in a binary file for the standalone game to read. And when we have implemented this method, we can call it here in run game so that we have an up-to-date save file before we run the game. Here I am defining the full path of the binary file that we are going to save. And that's just going to have the name game.bin by default. And we can figure out where it should be saved depending on the configuration. So if we are building for release, then it's going to be in the project path and then platform x64 and release configuration. And if you are building for debug, then obviously it will be in debug. And that's the location where we are going to save this file. The first thing we write to that file is the number of entities in the active scene. So when the game engine is going to read the information in this file, knows how many entities it should be reading. Here we have an integer that we write to indicate what type of entity we have here. Right now we only have game entities, but later on we will also have cameras or lights. And for those we can use this value to indicate what kind of entity it is. And after that we are going to write the number of components that an entity has so that the game engine can again know how many components it should read for this entity. Now, because we have different kinds of components, we need to actually add functionality to this base class for components so that we can write each component as a binary to this file. The first thing I'd like to write to this binary file here about the components is the type of the component. And for that, I'm going to add an extension method to component factory that we can use for components. And that extension method will just give us the value of the component type as we have here in this enumeration type.
Here we have a type switch that will give us the enumeration type of each component type. So if we have this component here and it's of type transform, it will return transform component type and the same for scripts. And if we have some kind of component that we haven't put here yet, that will give us an exception and then we will add it later. So now we can use that extension method to write the type of the component. Next, I would like to add a method in component base class that all types of component have to implement and that's to write them in a binary format. And then we can call this method for each component again in this method. And now we have to implement this method for each type of component that we have, which is luckily only transform and script so far. So I'll start first with transform. So all we have to do for transform component to save it in a binary form is to just write each component of its properties like position, rotation, and scale in this X, Y, and Z order. And for script component, we only have to save the name of the script. To save the name of the script, we use the UTF-8 encoding to just have 8 bits per character, because in the engine we are using 8-bit characters. And then we will save how long this name is, and then we will write the content of the name using this byte array. And this is what we have to do to save the project in binary form. And on the engine side, we of course have to read the binary file. And depending on what we find in that, we can create game entities. So in the next video, we are going to make sure that when we run the standalone game, we read the binary file and create every object in the scene, including the entity scripts, so that we will be one step closer to being able to run a game that can actually do something non-trivial. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time, until then take care and happy game engineering!